today's tutorial that I will be doing is a toucan bird. One of my favorite things to paint is birds and feathers. However, in this instance, we're going to keep it nice and simple so you can get used to some of the colors that we're using. I'll be using the Mikador Brilliant Watercolor Disc Set. This is the 48 colors. Within this painting, the toucan's quite colorful and I thought it would be awesome to use current colors and the new disc colors within the painting. So what I've done is I've briefly just plotted out the colors that I will be using within this tutorial. So um, purple, daffodil, lilac, violet, reddish orange, apple green, serline, ultramarine blue, reddish brown and some black. Within that black I might just take some of the colors um, from the other palettes and mix it in onto just a, a palette here to get that really nice rich black that shines. Now the brushes that I will be using today are these two. It is a number four Roy Mac brush and it is a quill mop and I will also be using this number six um, revolution brush also it's a round. To start off with I have water as a, a must, two jars, one on screen, one off screen, paper towel which is always helpful, um, it helps with blotting out, it also helps with picking up any of your colour that perhaps is too heavy on your paper. Now to the left of me are all the discs scattered. With the discs, if you do number them in the middle with an arrow pointing up, you can actually match your disc um, to the disc colours. So your starting point being permanent red and working clockwise, which will help you out when you're trying to work out what colour is what. To begin, I really want to start off with the yellow of the toucan itself. So in with the water and I want to keep the water just in the outline of his neck. As I bring the water to the page I don't want to flood it because your colour will not travel nicely. Just moving that water around so it's just a, a very light sheen is what we're after with our water. And what we'll drop in here is the daffodil colour and that is on disc seven which is one of our new ones and I'm going to pick up straight off the palette just a little bit and start dropping that yellow in. Now the water's already on the paper so it's going to help that colour travel. Just dip in if you need extra. Just working my way around almost bordering it and it's okay to do so because this colour will travel into your wet areas and you can just disperse it just softly pressing onto this paper and then it finer details in here and I'll come back to the eye details and I will come around the eye itself. Now once I've got that yellow on, as you can see it's quite much darker around the rim and I do want this to the left hand side of the bird I want to create a bit more colour so I'll just add that in and just bring that colour in on an angle just start to round off that area there. Again I'm using the layers of the colour to give me more intensity and to start forming the shape of the bird itself. There's really a lot of control that you have with this brush and I'm leaving that a little bit lighter but what I'll do is I'll wash off the quill brush and then just bring in a little bit of clean water with my brush, move that around a little bit and drop in a little bit of water like so. So that's step one. Now while that is doing its thing, I'm going to start painting the beak on this side so that it allows for this area to dry for me. Now the green that I want to use is the apple green and it is from disc two. I will use the quill and I will also turn my paper on an angle. Don't be afraid to move your paper around as you paint. So the apple green and I'm not going to wet the paper. I'm just diving into this apple green and I'm going to paint using that tip and I want my colour to be nice and steady here so I'm just working my way around and then using the side to get more coverage like so nice and lightly. As you can see there's quite a lot of control you can have with such a big brush which is excellent. I've only dipped into the colour once and as you can see I've got great coverage going around. 
so I'll take this green down to the bottom of the beak so that was pretty easy step two now my next color is the reddish orange that I'll be using this is also from the new set disc seven and I'll dip straight into that and this central bit of the beak and place that color in there and all I'm doing is straight in with the color and I'm okay if it merges a little bit with the green again cleaning out my brush as I go once it's clean on your paper towel you can continue so my next step I'm just going to use the apple green with the point of this and bring it around the eye ever so lightly and you've got that at full intensity and then I'm going to do the same around the tip of the eyeball itself and it's okay to go over the yellow that's fine clean the brush out again and it probably takes just a little bit longer to clean because again it uses it holds a lot of water so just be mindful of that as you paint so the next color I want to pop into the mix is the lilac color which is on disc 8 the lilac color is quite soft and I'm going to paint the entire beak section with the lilac so straight in with the color on dry paper and bring it around all the way down to the tip I'm letting it sort of merge and mingle as we go I'm not being too specific with the placement itself just straighten off his beak like so so that is that section done now I want to come in with the darker purple now that purple is found on disc 3 and the paper is still wet I'm just going to dive in with a little bit of this purple it goes a long way it's quite a strong purple and I really just want to now work up and around there are guidelines in the sketch for this again I'm still using the tip here so I haven't even gone to the other brush yet and then I'll bring that purple down the bottom to dry paper and ideally I want to leave a slight gap in between the top and bottom part of the beak as you can see you can still have a lot of control with this bigger brush now I really want to pop in just a little bit of pink I think disc 7 has a dark pink which I'm going to just use a little bit of and just pop it up the top of the beak it's quite vibrant and that's just going to highlight and merge and mingle now I'm going to do the same down the bottom of the beak itself it's a very beautiful pink it's a very strong pink so over the violet it'll dominate on your paper I'm just outlining that section I want it to go pow still having a little bit of that dullness of that violet showing through you can bring the pink over the purple as I'm doing now which is just going to add another layer of vibrancy for you and then what I want to do is I really want to come in with the orange on disc one it's quite a strong orange and I'm just going to duck straight into that and then come back to this area here and what I want to do is just paint the middle section and let the reddish orange underneath sort of glow because I really want that orange to pop so I'm layering it straight on I'm going to let that dry before I pop in any more detail but in saying so I do really want to pop in a little bit of that daffodil across the entire length of the beak and just move that in with the purples let them do their thing again clean your brush and I'm going to move the paper upwards and start working on the timber section um, timber being the branch and the color that I really want to use I want to use the reddish brown which is on disc 7 which is one of the newer colors 
and all I want to do here is just to create texture come in with a lot of water and there's still a tint of yellow on here and that's fine because I know that I'm using a brown I just want you to work your way around the branch around his feet and with this I don't want to bring the water all the way down I just want to give it a messy edge and dip into this brown and then we want to let it travel so I'll bring in my tip on the side and use my brush and drop in the color and let that find its way down the branch because his feet will be a little bit darker than the brown that we're using it'll color for any areas that you may go over so we're just creating texture by dropping this color in And then to add interest, I'm just washing the brush out, plenty of paper towel, and just dropping water in, and that's going to create gorgeous little blooms. Now I'll remove this, and I do now know that in disc eight there is a chocolate colour, which I'm actually going to introduce. So bear with me, I am adding a few more colours. Just bring that chocolate in from the bottom and upwards using the belly and then the tip to control your movements. And then all I'm doing is outlining the bottom of this branch. like so. Cleaning out my brush and probably wanting to create some more texture so this brown I want it to merge and mingle with the reddish brown that I've used. And then what you can do is just use your brush to bring down the colour so it's just going to be a, a very light wash itself like so so it's given us some texture um, the water and the colors they're all mingling and merging on the paper so as this dries it's puddled up a little bit in this area and that's fine because I do want it to bleed and bloom like so now by doing that we've created and given ourselves a little bit more time for other things to dry as we go so I'm just ripping off a little bit more paper towel and bringing in some fresh water now just with the black itself just so you know it will be going down the bottom this edge and virtually the entire body of the bird so anything that you do go over a line with that's fine because you will cover it with the black eventually so back into the apple green for a moment and what I want to do is I want to create another layer so straight into that and we're aiming to just create more depth and I do say a lot of the time that when you are painting and you do want to get that really pow color happening you do need to layer your paint doesn't matter how strong the initial pigment is it will dry lighter and I'll do the same down the bottom just a line Just washing out this and I want to bring in this gorgeous blue on disc 2 just in the corner here that's a real nice pop then I'm going to use that same blue now to work on the eye and bringing that blue onto the already painted area so I'm just outlining that area there and then I want to throw in a few dots with the blue and just above the eye itself. Now by working on a bigger piece of paper you get more of the movement with your watercolour. So a smaller sheet you're not going to get all the bleeds and blooms that you perhaps may want. 
Now this is all drying. I'm actually probably going to get um, a hair dryer now and just dry off some of the painting so I can go to the next step for you. Okay, so that's fairly dry now and I've come back to it. I'm going to bring in the smaller brush now. So this little guy is a number six. It's got a nice point to it as well for control. And I'm going to start working on his feet. Now for his feet, um, I'd like to use the ultramarine blue which is on the new disc set. So I'll just pop this over the side. This is the set here. And I'm ducking straight into that blue and just working on his feet. So if you're a beginner, this is a super, super easy painting for you to have a go with. It's about bold sections within the painting and getting a feel for the colors and the way to use the brushes so that you advance the control that you have as you paint. I'm going to do the same on the other, other side as well. And you'll find you'll learn how to control how much water and color you need as you go. If you feel that your brush is dragging, it just means that you don't have enough water on your brush to start off with. Now this is slightly darker, so I'm just adding a little bit of this green. It's a dark green. And I just want to add it in to the corners and just bring up that green. Just to darken the blue and to show the point of interest. Often when I paint, I may have a plan in my head, but as I paint, it sort of differs so what I've just done here is the dark green, which is on disc eight. And then I'll come in with the chocolate, which is just his claws. And I'm going in quite heavy and painting them in. And to darken the value, I can then come in with the green over that brown, which will help me get a really nice dark color that basically invents itself on the piece of paper for you. And I am quite a fan of merging colors on my paper and seeing where that, that takes me. I'm going to flip this painting all the way around and work a little bit backwards. And the reason being is because I want to work on this bottom bit of the beak. And before I do that, I just want to assess what I've done and created and see if I want to add any more colors. So for me personally, I do want to add in a little bit more of the yellow. So I will go the daffodil yellow and straight into the palette with that. And then I do want to just place it at the top here because I want the top of the beak to glow. I want to do the same here and pop that yellow in over the pink that we used. And then any other adjustments that you feel that you want to make. So I do want to use a little bit more of that daffodil down in the bottom of his beak. And as you can see, it's making that pink really pop. And again, just another yeah, um, layer of the green, but not all the way up this time. So I'm just going a little bit darker around the orange bit. And then I'll do the same around the eye and get my clean edges. So as certain sections dry, that's where you can come in and add detail. Okay, so we're working upside down and we're going to use the black that comes in the set. And that is on disc four. And I want to mix the black, I think with a little bit of green. So what I'll do is I'll experiment here and we'll see how we go. Just pop that out of the way. I'll pop a little bit of water onto my tray because we're going to need a fair bit of water to get through the body as um, color to get through the body. So we'll pop a little bit of water there and we'll activate that black and place it in here like so. That's fairly black black. I'm using a separate container of water to clean out that black and then I do want to put put in this green which I'm finding really beautiful this dark green on the new disc set. I'm just going to pop that in with the black and what I want to do now is pop in a little bit more 
I just want it to be tinged. And then this is where we want a quite a thick consistency, enough to give you control on your paper. And make sure your paper is dry as you're doing this because it will bleed. So we want nice lines. If you do not have a steady hand and you're a little bit concerned, you can always use a liner to finish, finish your details off. A liner as in a pen. So my dark, dark colour has now got this green tinge to it. I'll add in a little bit of black just on the side. And I want to bring that black up here. I'm just working my way around. And the black looks really quite striking on this painting with the yellows. Now, you can use the Stay Anywhere Permanent pen that I use with Mikado or any other black pen that you have, but I'm actually going to go in and do the eye with the black. And I'm going to reserve that little bit of white in the eye, which is really important. So as you paint that, be mindful that you do want to leave that. Now, the section of the neck that I haven't done, I'll come back to that. We're going to just work on the feather work now. You can bring your painting the right way around. I'll just move that over. And I'll, I will use this greeny black first and just outlining is all we're doing at the moment. I'm using the tip. I want to bring this color over the yellow. So just over the yellow carefully and loop it around. I want to do the same all the way around. So you're giving that illusion of feathers and the neck is almost glowing because we've left that little section lighter and again I'm just flipping the paper around so I can work my way up the neck I'm using that greeny black that we've created because this new green is actually quite strong and then as you see it's going a bit lighter we can add a little bit more black or a little bit more color to your brush and then I'm just using strokes all in the same direction for the rest of the feathers just clean that out. I can use that darker green again, just bringing it back to screen. Just pop that in its purest form. And then I can just bring that colour in every now and then and work my way down again. So my aim here now is to merge and mingle my blacks and my greens. I'm just moving those lines all the way down, which are basically my feathers. You can bring in a little bit more of that green. It's totally up to you. But we're aiming for dark, dark and interesting. And then there's this little bit of the feather which I found interesting, and I'm just leaving it detached from the body. And I'm just sort of shimming the paint and moving it around on the ends because I do not want to have too many streaks. Just a little bit more of that green. And I'm working on dry paper, wet brush, working my way around the feet and keeping my brush moving and the paint moving. Now I'm not going for a smooth finish. I actually do want this to have a really interesting effect. That bit's done, I'll just flip him over. You can see that green sort of shining through. Now, to add more interest, I'm going to just add water and that's going to create movement and interest. And you can darken up areas as you go and add straight green, which I'm doing right now, straight black. And again, just moving the brush strokes the same way. And then using my water and dropping it in to create points of interest and I'll do the same down the bottom a little bit of black with the green there's three feathers down the bottom you can create it to look like three feathers or you can just have it as a black and green mass you can add blue into your mix with the black I thought green would be interesting I'm 
Right, we're nearly there. Just a little bit more water again. I love texture when I paint. I love the plumes and the bleeds. But when you put more paint on an area of paper that is not dry yet, that is when you'll get that movement of colour. Okay, now just to finish off, underneath his neck, I'm going to add a little bit more of that apple green. And again, as this dries, you can come back in and add more layers. So with the feet themselves, I'm happy to come in again with my blue, straight in off the palette and add some more feature. Just some lines, a little bit of depth. So that extra layer, straight away it's made it pop. And then what I want to do is, just want to darken the value of my branch here and I do want to um, pop in some of the brown on disc 4 with a dark sepia and a brown so either either of these a little bit of that dark brown I think just to add a little bit more darkness and depth to that just using this size 6 nothing special but you as you can see a lot of texture and pattern has been created so it's up to you what you want to do you can add in just some more interest you can leave it as is I'm totally up to you I just feel like it just needs to be darkened just a little bit just anything you're not happy with go over and darken up the values and then just reassess and see the bits and pieces that you think you want to change. Again, there's a lot of green in here. You can come in and add some blue. So if you were to add the blue to the black, and then you can come around the head area and make that slightly darker with a, with a blue black. And if you want to go that really nice strong black, layer it. So again, just one direction. To finish it off, I'll use either the blue black that I've created or the green black. In his beak there is a, a strong line that goes across splitting his beak and then there's like little triangular pieces that come up. Again you can use a pen or you can delve in and practice your control skills. So for me I'm going to zoom and the most comfortable position for me is to work by moving my painting around which I feel will give me the best angle and line and I'm making sure that I've got enough flow on my brush so I've added a bit more water just starting from there like so and then just in these little triangle big pieces that are coming off his beak now if there's anything else that you want to fix up, come in, I'm just going to add in just a little bit of this black and darken his claws a little bit. And I might even add a little bit of this brown, darker brown, I'm just going to randomly mix it in with that green to get an even darker value. And then use that to texturize this branch. You can, if you want to, add some splotches, I quite like within my pieces I do a lot of controlled splotches so I'm just going to draw a circle a bit of a signature trademark with me with some of my pieces and then I'll add in that brown again another point of interest which you can add if you like but this is pretty much finished often good to step back and and reassess your painting as you go I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I try to keep it nice and simple for those of you who are just starting out. Again, the outline will be available um, on the Mikador site. Everything will be down in the description. And looking forward to seeing some of these finished paintings. And I hope you, again, I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for, for taking a moment to paint with me.